I'm really excited to read this series, but at the same time, I'm kind of just like, I will never have a coat as like fashionable as Kel's. And I'm really sad about that. Like I have my black coat, but at the same time, I would just love a fashionable coat that can change colors because then it would only mean I'd only ever need one coat. Why doesn't this kind of magic exist? Why doesn't this kind of fashion magic exist? Fashion magic. Oh no, I have a new story idea. Hi friends, my name is Joel and welcome back to my booktube channel. If you have yet to check out my Black British book recommendations video, I would highly recommend you go check that out because it is the British Black History Month and you should be diversifying your shelves by reading some books by black authors and so you should go to that video so that you can get some cool recommendations. And if you've yet to check out my Twitter nor my bookstagram, I would highly recommend you go check that out as well because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. So for today I am back with another one of my reading vlogs and I know a lot of you like it when I read to a theme or to a series and I'm happy to announce that today I'm going to be reading a series for you all and this one has been one that has been kind of highly requested but also I read the first book quite a while back and I really enjoyed it so I'm really excited to kind of carry on with the series and see what happens but also I know a lot of people have like fan casted me as one of the characters from the books so the book series that I'm going to be reading in question is the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab and the book series contains a darker shade of magic, a gathering of shadows and finally a conjuring of light and I'm just really excited to be getting into all of these books and plus the covers are so stunning. I've tried to match all three of the covers today because they all have like the same kind of colour palette so we have the red of my jacket, the black of the tail neck and you may be thinking what is the brown element? My lovely socks. My socks match the brown element. If you thought anything else you're racist. I'm just really excited to be reading these because on November 1st I'll be joining Sabine and Yasmin over on one of their channels for the A Conjuring of Read Alongs live show where we'll be discussing A Conjuring of Light but I'm sure we'll also be discussing the series as a whole so I'm really excited to be joining them and you should come and join us as well and so I'll have all of those links in the description down below for you but I'm really excited to kind of be rereading A Darker Shade of Magic because I remember loving this book a lot but I also read it two years ago so I kind of want to see how how much my reading tastes have changed since then and also how much of the story I remember because I don't really think I remember a lot about this so I'm really excited to rediscover it once again. I just think it'll be really nice to kind of just uh, read some books outside of my university reading because whilst I have been doing that, university reading has kind of consumed my soul and consumed everything of my being so I just think it'll be really nice to take a little bit of a break this weekend and just read a trilogy but also I have a few things, other things to do this weekend like tomorrow I might be going to Waterstones to pick up a few books Books, or I might be doing that today, although it's four o'clock, so, and Waterstones closes at half five, so probably tomorrow, I think tomorrow we'll go to Waterstones, maybe we'll go to a coffee shop and do some reading, if it's really nice, maybe we'll read by the cathedral and stuff, but yeah, so my plan is to read A Darker Shade of Magic today, I think I'm gonna start quite soon, and it's only 400 pages? It's only like 400-ish pages, so I should get through that within a few hours, I think I might stay up a little bit tonight and read it as well, but my main plan of action is to just get through it and since this has like 14 parts I think I'm gonna like catch up with you all every five parts so then we'll finish part five thing finish part 10 and then once we finish part 14 I will then catch up with you all and then on Sunday I'll be reading a gathering of shadows on Monday then I'll be starting a conjuring of light but no all of these covers are just so gorgeous these are the American exclusive editions I do also own this copy of a darker shade of magic this is the Illumicrate exclusive edition that was was in the A Darker Shade of Magic box. So this has kind of the UK exclusive edition with silver sprayed edges and like a red hardback with some foiling. On the US hardbacks, they have words in Antari on them, like Astra Vaz, Stas Rescon, Anosh. So it just looks really cool and really amazing. And I'm really looking forward to the starting this series. V.E. Schwab's writing just seems amazing. Plus we are reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue for the late night book club's pick for December. So getting a really nice hold of V.E. Schwab's writing style would be amazing. Oh wait, I forgot to even tell you what A Darker Shade of Magic is about. So A Darker Shade of Magic takes place in, oh my god, I can use this. I can use this to tell you. So the world of A Darker Shade of Magic takes place in four Londons. Red London is the London where Cal comes from. White London, White London's one of like war and, there's like a war going on in White London, I believe. Black London, she gone, she dead. We don't talk about Black London. And then we have Grey London, 
which is the London that Lila Bard is from. And so Cal is an Antari, someone who can travel between the four Londons through words that he uses and words of power. And so one day he stumbles upon a mysterious package as he takes things from one London to another London as a kind of middleman. And with this package, it's a very powerful artifact and something that could bring devastation across the Londons. And so when people start following him wanting to acquire this item, he's just like, ah, shit, what do I do? And so one day he stumbles into Lila Bard and once she saves him, he has no other option than to take her along with him and together they go on this epic journey. And so I'm very excited to see what happens in A Dark Shade of Magic and I'm really excited to see how this goes. I'm gonna catch up with you all once I finished with part five, which is, let's have a look at the title of part five, Black Stone. We're oh, actually I remember that. So I'll catch up with you all when we get to part six, which is Thieves Meet. So I'm really excited to see what happens and so I shall see you all in a little bit. Hello friends! So I'm currently 25% of the way through A Dark Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab and already I'm getting a lot of the feelings of this series once again. Like, I remember a lot of the pros and a lot of the ways of the plot and just being introduced to this world once again and it's just such a whimsical and lovely way. V.E. Schwab's writing is just so magical but also really like tasteful. Like there's just something about it that draws you in and I love that about her writing. And the entire story so far, like being introduced to Kel and Rye and Lila, like all of them are just such amazing, stunning characters. And the first five parts really set up the dynamic that we get throughout the rest of the novel and how this world works and how the world will work in subsequent chapters and parts. It's just amazing, like seeing kind of how the insight instant comes about and it's just kind of the situation that they both get into. Like it's really funny right at the end where Cal and Lila meet for the first time, but then, you know, Lila. <laughs> does something and Cal's just like, fuck, like what the fuck? So I'm really excited to carry on and see what else happens. However, right now I'm probably gonna be playing a little bit of Among Us for a bit. My main plan is to kind of get through the next part before I go to sleep for tonight. So then I can probably finish the book in the morning and then start a gathering of shadows. And I'm just having a lot of fun rediscovering this once again. And I can definitely kind of see now why a lot of people have been fan casting me as Rai because him and I are quite alike in a few ways and if I had a wardrobe as epic as Rise, then maybe I could pull off a good cosplay. I'm gonna get to playing a little bit of Among Us for a little bit and then I shall be reading and then I'll check back in in a little bit. Okay but really quick I just want to see what happens if I like zoomed in on the maximum zoom in and just look at this like
Hello friends, so I just got finished with the second third of A Dark Shade of Magic. I'm literally just chilling in bed. I thought we could have like a nice little casual chat about the second third of the novel. I'm finding the V.E. Schwab's writings really easy to read and really like casual, but it's also really nice to like grasp and read as well, which is why I'm getting through it quite quickly to be honest. Like I only have four more parts or chapters left. Although I don't really know how I'm supposed to be naming these chapters. Like I named them parts earlier on, but really they're more like chapters in themselves. Anyway, we're really getting into a lot of the plot now and a lot of the intrigue that's going on and it turns out that I, d I think this story only takes place over a day. Everything's happening quite quickly in terms of pacing, which I really like. I also find that Cal and Lila have been developed a lot further and we really get to see a lot of their motivations throughout this part. It's just really nice to see V.E. Schwab's writing come through in this and I'm really, really liking it so far. Although, I don't know, there's just something about it that I feel like I need more from this. Like I'm feeling like I need something else in this like maybe if there was a kind of like subplot or something Because the plot in this is pretty linear and there's literally like one single strand throughout Like I feel like I need something more for now. I'm thinking like it's really good I literally only have like four chapters left So I might try and read this tonight actually because there's like it's not that much left So I think I'm gonna read it and then we'll like talk about my feelings for the book and moving on to a gathering of shadows Although I don't know whether I'll do that tonight or whether I'll just do it in the morning. It depends on how tired I am and what time it is when I finish. I also played Among Us with some friends. That was really amazing because we played a map that I've never really played before so it was just really nice to kind of get used to that map and just see what it had to offer. But yeah, it is currently quarter to midnight and I am on page 280... I'm on page 283 and there's like 400 and something pages in this so I've got like 120 pages left so I think I definitely might be able to finish this tonight. I think I'm gonna go get to reading and if there's any reactions I'll be sure to capture them but we'll see. I will catch up with you all in a little bit and yeah we'll just talk about my thoughts and stuff so see you soon. Good morning everyone, I hope you have your matcha or like any caffeinated beverage or just something else because, you know, we're discussing. I finished A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab last night and to be fair, I'm really liking how V.E. Schwab's writing is because it's really easy to like get into the book and read the book. The way that it was paced just made it really easy for me to digest the novel and really easy for me to get through it quite quickly. I just think that it was really nice to see Cal and Lila's journey and how they grew as a pair and they grew their connection to one another as in amongst all the other characters within this series. Victoria Schwab left enough to be desired in the fact that while she did reveal a lot about her world in this um, novel, there is still a lot to discover and still a lot to find out. We're definitely not going to find out everything about the Four Londons, and so it's really exciting to see how this is going to develop further. I think my only nitpick about this is that because it takes place over a day, it's a bit hard to believe some of the character journeys that go on throughout the novel, like Lila suddenly going from selfish to selfless in a, in a matter of hours. I don't know, it doesn't really scream believable to me, I just don't think that kind of happens straight away, I think it happens over time. But again, I think it's kind of, we're not solidified in like, oh, they've a completely changed person, I think we're at the precipice of change. So 
overall, I gave this four stars, and I would still highly recommend that you read this. Now, I'm going to be moving on to A Gathering of Shadows. I find this cover really weird because Lila, I'm assuming this is Lila on the cover, but she's in red, but she's a gray London character. But I'm assuming now, since she is in red London, then that's why she's in the red getup. I don't really know a lot about this book. All I know is that there is a tournament. The tournament in question is the Essent Hash. And this is like the Illumicrate exclusive poster that came in the Addison box. And so I'm really like excited to see how this goes. And Alucard is in it. And I've heard a lot of things about Alucard, like from quotes and like what people have been talking about this series. So I'm really excited to meet Alucard and like get to know his character. I'm really excited to see the tournaments. Like I think I'm a really big fan of like the tournament arcs in anime. And I'm a really big fan of like tournament novels because it kind of gives a set structure and it gives a set dynamic to the novel right away because you know the kind of things you're going to be expecting. However, authors tend to subvert those expectations by throwing in different things. Like, I think that's why I kind of like Throne of Glass a little bit because it had that tournament aspect. The subsequent sequels, however, not so much. I think I'm gonna read for a little bit, uh, for like half an hour, but then I'm probably gonna head to town because I need to head to Waterstones to pick up my book orders for some of my horror readings. I don't know what the weather's looking like, but if the weather's looking nice to sit by the cathedral in Winchester and do some reading, I think I'll do some reading there because I just think it'll be really nice. All of the uh, special editions have like really nice fan art on the inside. This one is just gorgeous like I love this one like if I ever had a novel well the dream prince I would love an art just like this or maybe my cover I think this is only like a hundred pages more than a dark shade of magic so I definitely think I'll be able to kind of get it read in a fairly similar amount of time maybe it'll take like an hour and a bit more I think I'm gonna stick to doing like thirds because I like thirds and I like the way that they work and then I can do the last four chapters all together now Let's gather some shadows. Well, to be fair, shadows, a gathering of shadows. That reminds me a lot of White London because weren't the shadows in White London? But also, I've really solidified the fact that I kind of want all the editions of this now. So I'm, I want to order from Barnes & Noble, but shipping is so expensive. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, ooh, like, Mm, it would be great. What do, what do I do? What do I do? Does anyone have a staff discount I can borrow? I'm kidding, I wouldn't jeopardize your job like that unless I really still want Kel's jacket. The way that it can transform into all types of different coats, like, then I could only have one coat on the back of my door because then it will transform into so many other coats. And plus it'd be really sustainable as well because you'd only really need one coat. Imagine you could just have like one pair of clothing and it would just transform into other pairs of clothing and you could just wear them. And, although, to be fair, you'd always have to wash it. Or maybe they'll just, maybe it's self, does, does Cal's clothes self clean? These are just useless questions because this won't happen. But then anyway, I'm gonna get to reading A Gathering of Shadows and I'll check back with you in a little bit.
Hello friends, so we just finished part three, chapter three of A Gathering of Shadows and already I think this is like much better than A Darker Shade of Magic because we've already had these established characters but they're further built upon. Already we're introduced to much more of a character dynamic and much more character growth than we got in A Darker Shade of Magic and already I'm really feeling much more intrigued. We do get a lot of action and a lot of world building as well in the very first um, for three chapters of this text and kind of will building the extended world instead of just Arnez in Red London. We get the other kingdoms as well, which is really exciting to see. And it's also also building up towards the Essentash, which is the element games. And I'm really excited to see what goes down in that. And I'm really excited to see what happens, but that's not until like chapter eight, I believe. So we've still got a little bit to go, um, but I'm really excited to see what happens. The plot is intriguing because we already have like little threads being woven already with certain aspects of other worlds such as what's happening in Grey London and what's happening in other respective Londons like I'm conf I'm like I'm confused as to how a certain thing has come to be and how a certain thing has happened but I'm intrigued to find out the explanation later on. In the difference between A Dark Shade of Magic and A Gathering of Shadows you can really see the growth in Vee Schwab's writing and the growth in the way that she tells her stories and already the prose is just so beautiful and amazing and the descriptions are so intricately woven. I'm really enjoying it. I think what I'm going to do is actually instead of reading three chapter slash parts this time. I'm gonna read four, so then I go up until the end of the Essentash, and then we see what happens after that. It is eight o'clock, like, come out to half eight, and I still have yet to have dinner, so I'm thinking I'm gonna go cook some dinner, come back in here. I think it's gonna be quite a nice, solid next few parts, because I think it's just gonna be the build up to the Essentash, and kind of, I think we're gonna get Kel and Lila meeting once again, maybe Alucard and Rai talking to one another, because I feel like there's a bit of history there, but I'm not sure what. It's just, there's a lot more threads in this novel, and threads is a main thing that comes up into this, like threads of magic, threads of power, which is the new trilogy that's coming out in this universe, but there's a lot more threads in A Gathering of Shadows than there was in A Darker Shade of Magic, because it felt like there was only one thread, and then right at the end it started to like fray off into smaller threads that then kind of carry on in this, but these kind of explore those frayed threads a little more, which is amazing, so I think this is why I'm liking this novel a lot more than A Darker shade of magic. I'ma go cook some food and then I'll check back with you once I finish the Essentash. So yeah, see you in a bit. So I just got done with part 8 slash chapter 8 of A Gathering of Shadows, and I thought the entire Essentash was going to take place throughout part 8 slash chapter 8, but it didn't. And I'm really happy about that because now we get to see more of this magical tournament and what happens, and I'm just really intrigued to see like who wins and what happens and like how our characters are performing and this is just so good and I'm really 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 enjoying it and there's a build up towards the conclusion and how all of that's going to figure out and kind of how just our main villain is kind of working things out and it's just really exciting to see and it's kind of hard to try and not be spoilery because there are definitely a lot of spoilery things that I would love to talk about however I'll probably talk about a lot of that in the live show with Sabine and Yasmin. I literally have like 117 pages left I think I'll definitely be able to get that read tomorrow. So I think I'm gonna check back in in the morning. Like I do have a few theories about kind of Lila and a few other characters and kind of 
things that don't exactly make sense and things that like have been referenced to a lot throughout this, not only this book, but also Dark Shade of Magic as well. So I'm really excited to see if my theories are correct. I was talking to my housemate about them earlier and she seems to agree with my theories as well because she has read, she's like in the middle of A Gathering of Shadows before she like took a little bit of a break. So I'm really excited to kind of see about my theories as well. And I, I'm tired. I'm very tired and I need to get up for my lecture tomorrow. This is this is definitely a much better and stronger novel than A Darker Shade of Magic and I'm really 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 enjoying the tournament. I can just picture it in my head and like the way that it works and stuff. I need to sleep. I really need to sleep because I'm getting more sleep deprived. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna head to bed and I will catch up with you once I have finished A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. Good night friends. Good morning everyone, actually no, I think it's the afternoon now. It's 12.38, it's kind of the afternoon, but let's just say morning, oh well. I had my morning lecture this morning, and during the lecture, because I'd already read a lot of the lecture material and the seminar was basically covering a lot of the stuff that was already in the lecture, I decided to finish A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab, and oh my gosh, the ending, the cliffhanger, the cliffhanger, V.E. Schwab. Like, I feel so bad for people who had to wait for the final book to figure out what happens after this cliffhanger because, oh my gosh, I would not be able to wait. I would literally scream. Cliffhanger endings are just such, like I love them, but I also really hate them. I love them as a writer, but I hate them as a reader because I'm just like, I want the next book. Fortunately, I have it. The ending, immaculate, iconic, I loved it. I enjoyed this so much more than A Darker Shade of Magic. Like, I think it's where we had like that long passage of time. So we were really easily able to see like the growth in character dynamic and the growth in character relationships as time had passed naturally and also we got to see a lot more of the characters making active decisions rather than the plot just happening to them. I think that's where I really liked A Gathering of Shadows a lot more. The characters really came through and this really did seem more like a character driven novel rather than a plot driven novel. So I'm really, really happy that it improved. The tournament was just amazing. The Essentage was just iconic. I loved it. It's just so good. And I really loved how V.E. Schwab drew it out because I thought it was only gonna take place over the Essentage, but it actually takes place along the rest of the story. And so I'm really happy about that. I'm excited to see how we recover in A Conjuring of Light and how we kind of move on from this. And I'm really, really happy and really excited to like delve into it. I know Sabine is like currently almost finished with A Conjuring of Light. And so I'm really excited to see her reactions. I'm just really excited to see like what goes on. I love it. I ended up giving this five stars because it's amazing. I was gonna dress as like White London or Black London. However, I don't stand either of those Londons and I'm just like, Mm, I'm really scared of that. Like maybe one day I'll do like a white London cosplay where I have like black veins and stuff. The Black Veins by Asia Monet. So instead I went for a Rai Maresh little like inspired outfit because a lot of you have fan cast me as Rai Maresh and so I thought why not? Why not entertain the fantasy? But I also just realized I don't have my sword earring on so I'ma just throw that in. I have I have a few predictions for this. Um, I'm kind of scared to read this because obviously this is the last novel in the trilogy. I'm really scared to see what happens like in the finale of this and waiting for Threads of Power might kill me. But I already know that like this series is great. Like I love this series a lot. The characters are amazing. Okay, so this has 15 chapters slash parts. So basically every five chapter slash parts 
I will like check in and I'll get back to you. Um, I really like how this is like evenly set out in thirds so I can easily like get to like all about what happens. I don't know how V.E. Schwab is with killing ca like important characters. So far it doesn't seem to be like a thing that she does. However, see I don't think Hal or Lila are gonna die. I don't think Rai or Alucard are gonna die. Someone's gonna die I think but I don't know who. Although if no one dies, no one dies. But I hope that it's very validated in the reasons why they don't die. Because I don't want to get to a point where a character should die, but then somehow miraculously they survive. I'm really afraid, but with V.E. Schwab's writing and world building that we've built upon and it's stellar and it's amazing, I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to rock my world and it's going to be amazing. So yeah, I will check back with you all in a little bit. Good evening, friends. Um, so I've just finished the first third of A Conjuring of Light, and... <sighs> hmm. 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 I kind of want to punch the antagonist in the face. This builds up a lot of what was in the previous novel, with the developments of some new characters, with the developments of kind of Lila, Kel, Alucard, and Rai, and kind of their dynamics. My theory was correct. We love that for me, and I'm just like, yes. Um, so we are now getting into like the second third of the novel and the main proper chunk of everything. Especially with everything that's been going on in terms of like a certain character, I'm prepared for everything to go completely wrong because we still have like two thirds of the novel left and they're already trying to get rid of the antagonist. So I'm like, ha, things need to go extremely wrong before things can go extremely right once again. I'm really liking the characters and the further exploration we get into some of the characters like Maxim and Rai's mother and um, Holland and a bunch of other amazing characters as well. So it's just really nice to kind of get this added depth to the characters. So I'm gonna get to reading the next 200 pages of this book. They're also quite short parts as well in comparison to like the very beginning of the novel. So yeah, I'm gonna get to reading and I will check back in in a little bit. Bada bing bada boom. Um, hi everyone. So we're now at 
uh, part 11, chapter 11 of A Conjuring of Light, we get some really strong plot developments in how we're going to defeat the antagonist and going towards the final battle. I am afraid, I am scared. It was really nice to see Lila kind of like talking with Mavis and kind of talking to her on an equal level and seeing like how these two women interact in a world that's mostly dominated by men. And like kind of the whole dynamic with Mavis and kind of her piracy is really interesting as well and how that all came to be and like the market itself. That was really, really well developed and really well done. And I just really love how that works. It's a shame that we only see it for like this short part in the novel. So I'm hoping in the Threads of Power, we get to see quite a bit more of it. And especially with how the interaction with Mavis like ended off, I really think that we're gonna get something like that in a subsequent novel, hopefully. I have 184 pages left, which isn't a lot, and I could potentially finish this tonight. However, I don't think I'm going to. I think I might try and get an early night because I do have a 9 a.m. lecture tomorrow. I don't know how this reading vlog is going because like, I feel like I'm saying like the same things over and over again. I really am enjoying this series and I really am enjoying how like everything has been building up towards like this final confrontation and the final battle. I think so far, I think A Gathering of Shadows remains at the top spot as my favourite book in the series. I am really excited to see how this is gonna end. I'm also really afraid to see how this is gonna end. Then I think I'm gonna like try and like talk about it. So I think I'm gonna try and like round off my thoughts about the entire series as a whole, but I think it's already very clear that I really recommend you read this series, like I really would recommend it. It's just been great and I'm really, really, really enjoying the writing. I'm really enjoying how easy the writing is to digest as well, like I think that's the one thing with V.E. Schwab's writing style that I really enjoy is how like easy it is just to take in the words and just easy to digest the words that she's trying to tell us. And it's weird because I haven't been page tabbing any of these books, like I haven't really been annotating any of these books, nor have I made a lot of notes notes, which is weird for me because usually I like like to be a little bit more methodical with my kind of reading system. So with like the secret history I'll probably be annotating that and just kind of going through that and s for the first read, but I think for like reading vlogs, like series reading vlogs and like genre based reading vlogs, I probably won't be doing that. Yeah, I guess this is just a really nice way of kind of me developing my own reading system and the way that I do things. I'm gonna get to like finishing this book and then I'll probably talk to you once I finished it and we'll recap at the end. See you soon. Okay, so I finished Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab and I have no idea how to rate this. There were some good parts. There were some parts that I question. There's just a few issues that I have with this book and mainly is the series as a whole. And so I think I'm going to consult Corpile. Corpile is the book rating system created by G from the Book Roast. And basically it's kind of a more methodical way of getting more accurate book ratings based on seven main criteria. And so because I have no idea how to rate this book, I think I'm gonna consult Corpile to see how I am going to finalize my rating because right now I am between a three and a four star. I did redo my rating for Dark Shade of Magic. I brought it down to three stars because upon further reflection, I just feel like it just wasn't that strong for me. Although A Gathering of Shadows still remains supreme as the best book of the series. Like I enjoyed this a lot and I enjoyed this so much. And as I call Pearl, we can talk about my um, feelings about this book as a whole. So I have my match tea latte and together we will figure out my rating for A Conjuring of Light. I have my MacBook at the ready with the seven categories, so let us go. So for characters, I feel like the characters in A Conjuring of Light were really nice. Like I love the dynamics between each of them and I felt like the relationships were really well done. I feel like each character had their own distinct personality. However, the thing that fails for me in A Conjuring of Light is the 
character arcs. I feel like some of the character arcs just didn't exist. Lila's character arc is non-existent. Kel had like a small one. Holland had a major one, but I feel like it was undeserved. I feel like, I feel like it was very rushed and it would have been better being drawn out over kind of a gathering of shadows and a conjuring of light as opposed to just being shoved into this book. Developing characters only for the sake of them having a more emotional intensity when they get killed. No character really grows in this novel apart from Rai. I, but I do still love these characters and it's still amazing hence why it's a seven. Um, the villain as well, just, I, I just don't like villains that are just the big bad. I don't like big bad villains whatsoever. I feel like love a villain that has some sense of purpose, some personality at least. The villain doesn't really have any of that. The villain, I feel like the villains from A Darker Shade of Magic really did better in the sense that they had some personality, they had some emotion. Atmosphere in the story, I think, I, like, I love Vicky Schwab's world building. I just think that her world is just so amazingly immaculate in the way that she kind of weaves the societies of each individual London and kind of tries to make every kind of word that she uses count in describing this world and the way that the world shifts in this novel from one of hope to one of hopelessness. I feel like that was also really well done as well. So I think for atmosphere I'm gonna give it an eight because it does really sound amazing. Writing style, I love E. Schwab's writing style. I think I've made it clear throughout the entire trilogy how much I enjoy her writing and the way that she kind of describes things and how some of her writing is perfectly quotable. I think for that reason I'll probably give it a seven purely because like whilst I did really like her writing style I feel like some of the times her way with kind of structure and her kind of pacing as well was off which leads me into plot which has the weakest score of them all which is a five. Plot? Mmm. Mm. Lack thereof. We had our goal and we also needed to defeat the big bad villain, but there just wasn't much else to it. There wasn't much else to the entire thing. Like sure, there was like little bits and pieces of like action here and there, but like they didn't all correlate. That's where it fails. Plus again, the character arcs weren't great. I feel like if we took some of um, Holland's backstory that we get in this novel and pop it into a, ga a Gathering of Shadows, then it would have really helped this novel shine a lot more because we really get to see Holland's motivations for what he does in this text and like kind of what he aspires. Instead we're getting in this, it feels very last minute to me and I don't like that. Also the fact that we get, again, the developments of certain characters only to kill them off later also doesn't sit well with me. I think Lila, I love Lila as a whole. Like she is, an, she is a great character. She's a great like fighter. I feel like her voice is very present in the books. However, I have a, I have a few issues with Lila as a whole because we have Lila who um, doesn't really go through a character arc except in like the very first-ish novel and then like it finalizes in the second but we don't really see her go through anything in A Conjuring of Light. I don't know what her motivations are for like wanting to kind of help people in this because she's always emphasized that she's always on the run, that she's always, she always wants to be alone, she's looking for the next big adventure. Sure, this is an adventure. Like she doesn't really suffer a lot in any of these novels and I think that she needs to suffer. Like V.E. Schwab was a little bit afraid of harming Lila specifically having bad things happen to her. Like sure, she did like one thing that happens to her, but it doesn't really, there's not really much of an emotional impact on that. I just don't feel Lila is believable as a whole, as a character, because she doesn't really go through any like major struggles throughout the text. Like I feel like she needed kind of a few emotional and physical struggles as a whole. For Intrigue, I gave it a six because whilst I really did like the story, I wasn't really fully invested in it purely because of the lack of like character arcs and stuff. Logic, I gave a seven. So yeah, the villain just doesn't make sense. He's like a full magical being. We've already seen that he can like change the properties of the elements like from fire to water and water to air and air to earth. So like why can't he just make a being of that element and control it as an extension of his self? That would have made him a much more formidable foe and it would have shown like right in kind of the third act where we think the villain is losing, it kind of would have given us that perfect moment where we're like oh no like actually, we thought we were winning, but wait, we're actually losing. And then enjoyment, actually, I did enjoy the read quite a bit. Like I did enjoy kind of my reading experience of it. So I gave enjoyment a seven. Let us go. So seven plus eight plus seven plus five plus six plus seven plus seven equals 47 divided by seven is 6.71, which according to the core pile rating system is three stars. I will solidify the fact that A Gathering of Shadows is the best book of this trilogy. So we finished another 
trilogy reading vlog and overall I did have a lot of fun reading this series and I did have a lot of fun kind of exploring the world of the Four Londons and exploring everything that happens. I am really excited to see the threads of power and kind of how that goes on and like continues building on these stories. I think I just kind of want to solidify the fact that three stars isn't a bad rating. Um, like whilst I am like quite critical of these books and quite critical of the writing as a whole, I still really enjoy these books and I think that we need to remind ourselves that we as readers can still enjoy a book and be critical of the things that we read. Like if I'm pointing out major flaws about a book, it's not because I hate it and that I want it to fail, it's genuinely because I want to see this novel succeed and I kind of want to help other readers kind kind of be prepared for something that, you know, they might not see themselves. And I think we as readers are entitled to our own opinions and that is amazing. So I'd still highly recommend these books because they are amazing and the world is amazing, the characters are amazing. So overall this series gets about four stars. I think I just think it's because of my love of The Gathering of Shadows, that's why I rounded it up, otherwise it would have been like, th I mean 3.5 to four stars, like let's just solidify with that but I'm really excited to be cracking on with more books soon. My next reading vlog is going to be a horror book reading vlog and I'm gonna show you three of the books. We've deserved this, one for each book of the books that we read this weekend. So the first book obviously that I'll be reading for the horror reading vlog is One by One by Ruth Ware. This is a thriller. The next book that I'll be reading is The Haunting of Hill House by Shaley Jackson. Continuing on with Netflix series, I'm going to be reading The Turn of the Screw. I had a lot of fun and I'm really, really, really excited to see what series I read next month. So if you did have any suggestions for any book series that you would like me to read, pop them down in the comment section down below and I will look at them soon. So yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. This video shout out goes out to Sabine and Yasmin, the co-hosts of A Conjuring of Readalongs, the read-along that I'll be joining in their final live show talking about A Conjuring of Light. I'll have all of the their channels in the description down below. I'll pop my social media links in the description down below so that you can follow me on any of those platforms. And also I'll leave my coffee and my Amazon wishlist link in the description so that you can donate any amount of money or books to help support this channel further. So I guess until the next video, bye friends.